Hello, I'm Ta, and today I'm going to teach you how to set up an auto crafting system for Blood Magic Slate. It'll do all the different types of Blood Magic Slate. Now, I've seen uh, a few places that have used systems of buffer chests where it has, like, once one buffer chest gets full of uh, blank slate, then it'll start pulling the reinforced slate because it can't pull any more blank slate, and it'll keep doing that to fill up all the chests. Um, so that takes up a lot of resources, and uh, I think it's cooler to have on demand crafting, which is what we're going to have here. Um, so the way it's going to work is like this. If I say want some reinforced slate, the tier 2 slate, request that. It's going to send up my stone into here. This will be then converted into blank slate. We pulled back into the system um, and go back into the ME. We pulled out again in order to be used to create my reinforced slate, which will then be converted. And pulled out of there, put right back to the ME system. Right there. Now we have our reinforced slate. Uh, it's that simple. This is the contraption that we're using. <laughs> it looks a bit cumbersome, but it's fairly small and compact. Um, and I'm going to show you how to build this now. So let's go and check that out. So this crafting system revolves around the idea of what I like to call surrogate blocks or indicator blocks. If I want to craft some blank slate, I'm going to send in stone to the altar, but I'm also going to send in a block of wood. I've chosen block of wood. You can choose whatever you want for your uh, indicator blocks. I've chosen these ones just because they're really easy to tell apart. So blank slate, I'm going to send in the stone and a piece of wood. And the piece of wood is going to tell the system that what I'm expecting is blank slate. If I want to make some reinforced slate, I'm going to send in iron instead of wood, and that'll tell me not to pull anything out of the altar until it sees reinforced slate. So that's how these indicator blocks are going to be used. It's going to tell us, it's going to indicate what kind of block it wants to pull out. Now, in the patterns that I'm going to be making, I'll be using stone with a uh, wooden indicator block to get blank slate, but then I'm going to be using blank slate with an iron indicator block to get um, reinforced slate. So you could do it by using stone with an iron block to get reinforced slate, in which case you'll use a brand new piece of stone and it will go through from stone to blank slate and from blank slate to reinforced slate. Um, what that means is if you already have some blank slate in your ME system, it's not going to use that up to create the reinforced slate. It's going to start with a brand new piece of stone. Now, some people, they prefer that because they want to keep that blank slate they already had. For other people, it's a waste of resources because oh, I was never going to use that blank slate anyway. You can choose however you want to do your patterns, but I'm going to be doing mine in that system like that. So we're going to get started with the first circuit. We're going to start with some the red circuit. Um, this is going to be done. We're going to start with a storage bus on the bottom of the altar. Now, this doesn't need to be on the bottom. It could actually be any side of it. I like it on the bottom because I feel like it makes the whole thing look cleaner. You know, you can uh, you don't have to have a lot of things all over the top of your altar, it makes it look still nice and neat, and the entire system is hidden. Um, if you already have things underneath, like maybe a well of suffering underneath the altar, you can pull that from any other side. So we'll start with this, and we'll add five export buses onto the end of this. From the middle one, we're going to pull out um, another piece of cable, and then on the side of that, we will be putting an import bus. Now, I'm going to put some chests down. They, I'm using vanilla chests here. Uh, they can be any kind of container. Use a trap chest in the middle just because I need five in a row. Um, they don't doesn't matter if they double up like vanilla chests because we're just going to be pulling items out of all of them anyway. Uh, though, if they do double up, it does save you a couple of channels um, later on. Not a big deal because these are sub-networks, but it still is just a few less resources. So... Now we need to configure each of these uh, export buses. And what we're going to do is we're going to use each of these types of slate into each of these export buses. So I'm going to start with basic slate. I'm going to use blank slate here uh, and a redstone card configured to uh, active with signal. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with reinforced slate and all the rest as well. Okay, so we've got all the pieces of slate in there. Everything is all configured properly. And uh, 
Now, if we were to put an item in here, and it would come up to there, if we put a piece of stone in there, it would be pulled out, put in the altar, and then sucked up once we got a piece of basic slate, uh, provided that we had a redstone signal. So now we need to provide redstone signals to each of these, depending on what kind of slate we want. And we'll be using the next circuit for that. All right, for the blue circuit, we're gonna start by putting a piece of cable on top of this one that we had sticking out here and a toggle bus on the end of that. Now we wanna make sure these systems are connected with some power. So we're gonna use a piece of uh, quartz fiber to provide power without making the channels combined. Um, and then we will be placing cable on top of all of these where the export buses are and level emitters on the bottom of each of these. So this will let us individually turn on or off these export buses. Now, these level emitters need to be configured to the surrogate items, the indicator items, for each of the corresponding types of slate. So in here I have the blank slate, um, so I need to make sure that I use the surrogate item for blank slate. I'm going to put that in there uh, at a level of one. Now if I have one item in whatever this channel can see as its inventory, uh, it'll turn on this red sun signal. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, for iron and make sure that, again, it has to align with the type of slate that you have in the export bus. All right, so now that we have all of those configured, we're gonna extend two more blocks this way. We're going to put a storage bus on one and another quartz fiber on the other. And here we're going to have our interface. This is where we're going to connect to the rest of our ME system. And this one we're going to put a dropper facing downward, a vanilla dropper. Now, I'm going to just connect this up to my makeshift ME system that I have over here. Uh, so we can now see as it lights up all the channels that are on these. You notice that these channels are lit up because we have all the export buses and the storage uh, bus. But on here we only have one channel lit up. It's for the storage bus. Even though we have all these level emitters, that's because this toggle bus turns off all of these channels unless we provide it with a redstone signal. So our next circuit is going to be very simple, and we'll be able to just provide it easily with a redstone signal. All we need for this one is a storage bus and a level emitter um, pointing into this block that has the toggle bus on it. And then we need to provide it some power, so we'll just bring this over here and give it a quartz fiber. So notice, as this redstone signal turned on, it lit up all of these channels as well. We want this redstone signal to turn on anytime there is nothing in this chest. So if the item amount is below one, it should be on. As soon as I put something into this chest, notice that turned off and then on again, and this was pulled up into here. I'll try to show you that again, if you can see it. Watch those channels will turn off and then on, and the item will be pulled here. That's important because it ensures that these level emitters will always have proper value when put into, or before the item is taken up into the altar. All right, so our next system is going to be the orange cable where all we're gonna do is have a storage bus and an import bus. However, this import bus is going to need to have a capacity card because we need to have a filter. Now this doesn't need to be applied energistics. This could be done with just any uh, item transfer nodes or Ender IO item conduits, anything like that will work. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm doing everything with only applied energistics and vanilla. Um, the only requirement for your item transfer capabilities is that you're able to make sure that it has five items filtered in the extraction. So the five items I'm going to use here are going to be the five different types of slate besides the last one. Because these are the types of slate that we want to be able to pull out and put into the altar. There's no reason to pull ethereal slate out because we're not going to ever be using that to craft in the altar. So I'm going to grab from each of these and put them into my filter. So now that all these items are filtered out, I can demonstrate how this works. If I put in a piece of wood, it won't be pulled out because it's not filtered. But if I put in a piece of stone, it's going to pull it out and put it up here. And now, because there's wood in there, it turned on this export bus. So now that that is crafted 
into a blank slate. It will pull out the blank slate and put it in here. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Now we need to pull out the items from these chests um, so we can get them back into the Emmy system because now this is what we wanted. We wanted our blank slate. All right, so pulling these items out is going to be pretty easy. All we need to do is put some import buses on the bottoms of these. Remember how I said it'll save you some channels? If these were all individual, you would need five import buses, but because they combine, I only need three. That's the only difference. There's nothing super crazy about it. It's pretty cheap to make two extra import buses, so don't worry about that. I'm going to now extend this line out of here and make sure that it provides power by connecting it to uh, the red line. And I'm going to put a storage bus on here. Uh, pull this over one more and a level emitter so it's right next to where the dropper is. Now I'm going to put a solid block of any kind on top of there. And notice that it drops out the piece of wood that I had in there. Actually, I'm going to put that back in so we can see that it happened again. Um, but I want to make sure that I do this with this configured. I want to make sure I have at least one item in my storage, which will be this chest here. Now you will see almost immediately um, it's going to pull the item out when I put this chest down because there will be a place to put it. And it will drop that wood out there. So now that we have our blank slate in there, it was able to drop that single piece of wood. Uh, there's a reason why this has to be a dropper instead of like an import bus. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So now that we have this block on here, it's going to allow us to disperse redstone to both directions at once. Um, but first, let's take care of this block that's falling into the abyss. Um, this is pretty simple. We're just going to be using a very small circuit here. Whoops, not yet. Um, of just a uh, storage bus and import bus. Pull items out of the system. I'll just power it like this. Please don't use AE2 for this. It's way better to just use a single item transfer node or IO, enter IO conduits, anything like that. Um, this is ridiculously overkill for doing this kind of thing. Um, but again, AE2 only. So uh, This will now allow us to pump this piece of wood uh, out of the dropper, which I think we already did, into this chest. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't put it back in there. Okay, so if I take this out, put it back, it'll now come out of the dropper, into this chest, be imported from the chest, into the system. We should be able to see it. There it is, in our ME system. Great. We don't need that anymore. Um, and then lastly, we need to be able to pull this piece of blank slate out and put that into the ME system as well. So for that, again, very simple setup. We just need to have an import bus, storage bus, and connect all the lines here, give it some power, and we want to ensure it's already pulled the item out. We want to make sure that this only activates with a redstone pulse that comes from this level emitter. So what that's going to do is say, once it sees an item in here, and only once it's registered in there, it will set up a pulse to make sure that the, the surrogate block is dropped out of the, uh, the dropper first. And then it also allows this item to be pulled away. But that makes sure that it doesn't ever skip if it sees an item, and if it goes through too fast or something, and the level emitter doesn't update. We're never going to accidentally miss that and keep the item in the dropper. So because we only want one thing in there at a time, we need to make sure that we go into our ME interface and set this blocking mode to be do not push crafting items if the inventory already contains items. Because as long as that surrogate block is in there, we don't want it to start trying to craft the next type of, of uh, slate. Um, other than that, other than making the patterns now for this, the entire thing is done. So let's move on to making the patterns uh, to allow us to actually do the crafting in this. All right, so right now there's nothing in our ME system. I took everything out of it. So what we're going to need to do is have one of each of these items in our system in order for us to be able to create our recipes. So get them in there each and one of all of the surrogate blocks. Now, I wanted to talk about this a little bit more. Your indicator blocks can be anything. It can be any type of block. I suggest using something like maybe the, the quartz uh, weapons and tools, or maybe I often have used the inscriber presses if I have extra presses. There's five of them total if you include the inscriber name press. Uh, you want something that isn't going to be used up out of your system um, and, like, and taken away because you always want it to be there. It's not going to use up any of the items. It's not going to consume any of the items because it'll always just give it back. So it could be anything, but 
I like to choose things like like these tools where nobody's ever going to pull them out and no other crafting recipe is going to use them. So in order to make our recipes, they're very simple. The way it's going to work is I start with my stone, I give it a piece of stone, and the surrogate block for my blank slate, and that will return the surrogate block and a blank slate. There's my first pattern. Now I'll take the blank slate I just made and use that with a block of iron. It will return the iron and give me back a reinforced slate. Take my reinforced slate that I just made, take a block of gold, and that will give me an imbued slate, but it'll give me the gold back as well. And then I'll take this imbued slate and a block of diamond. That will give me demonic slate. And lastly, I'll take my demonic slate, block of emerald. That will give me my ethereal slate. These are all of my patterns all put together. I can just toss them directly into my interface. Now, you'll notice that some of them show that they're making the um, surrogate block, and some of them show that they're making the uh, actual item itself, the slate. You'll notice that they all say creates one oak wood plank and one blank slate, creates one block of gold, one imbued slate, creates one reinforced slate, one block of iron. So they all have both of them. I'm not sure how uh, Applied Energistics determines which item is displayed on here. It doesn't have anything to do with the order that you put them in here. I can't figure it out. So just know that even though it shows up like that, it does. it is going to work properly. Now, one thing I do want to show you is that on the craftable uh, screen, we have now um, craftable recipes for all of the surrogate blocks and all of the slate. There isn't a way to avoid this, unfortunately. So you'll just have to know that while these ones say they're craftable, they're not actually craftable from this recipe. Um, it'll be, you'll have to use a different recipe if you want to make them. I would say that the best thing to do is to make sure you don't have clashing recipes for things. Make sure that there are not things that would normally be craftable, hence something like the quartz uh, tools or the inscriber presses. Um, those would be my suggestion, but if you know how to do recipe priorities and things, then you can easily just use any blocks you want. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it's going to work. We're going to try to make some ethereal slate with this. Uh, the one that will require it to go through all the different steps. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me take out the other slate. If We already have a piece of uh, demonic slate in there, so it's just going to use that one. Um, do everything and just pull out all the slate first. And now let's craft some ethereal slate. So it should go through everything, and we'll see it go. We'll start by putting our first piece of slate in there. We'll craft that. Remember, we have a piece of wood in here. You can see it'll get pulled out, and then I'll put in the next things, the surrogate block. It'll reset those and ensure that we now have the iron triggering this one. So it'll only pull out those. It'll do the same for the next one. I'm going to go through this for all the different levels of slate. Okay, so that should now have put a piece of ethereal slate here in our ME system. Fantastic. Uh, so everything works. That's great. So uh, as I mentioned, there are a few places that can have um, ender IO conduits or things like that. Uh, we have the orange cable line, which allows you, you'll have to be able to have it with a filter. The pink cable line, which requires nothing else. And also the purple line, uh, which only requires to have a redstone signal. Um, you can replace those with any kind of item transfer capabilities. I just wanted to make sure that was pointed out so that you don't have to use uh, Applied Energy 6 for any of those ones. The rest of them do rely on AE2 properties such as the toggle bus or um, level emitters with storage buses, things like that. The other thing I wanted to talk about before the end is why I have this toggle bus and the uh, dropper here. Now, let's start with the dropper. I originally had it set up to be one of these with both of them, an import bus uh, pulling from this chest and an import bus pulling from a chest that was here. Uh, the problem I was running into is that sometimes when the level emitter would go off, it would actually leave it on. Even after it had pulled the item out, it would leave it on for long enough that it could pull two items out of the dropper. So it would pull out the surrogate item from whatever the slate was that was crafted. The inscriber would then, or the, sorry, the interface would then put the next two pieces in there and they would pull out one of those pieces. So it would freeze in the crafting process. So that's why I went with a dropper, which ensures that only one item is ever going to be put out for a single redstone pulse from the level emitter. And that was able to solve the problem. With the 
unfortunate uh, change of having to have another miniature circuit here. But that's nothing too big for that kind of a change. And the other one is with the toggle bus. Um, so the toggle bus is here because there was a thing, it's, it's called a race condition. It's used in uh, computer programming and computer logic circuits. Um, simply enough, in a, a circuit design or any, anything where you have two signals that are going at the same time, a race condition is a situation in which uh, the output will be different, the outcome is different, depending on which signal gets there first. And that's what was happening here. I was having an issue where sometimes you would put in a, an item, you'd put in a, a piece of stone to make a blank slate. And so it would go through, it would make the blank slate, it would light up the blank slate indicator over here, come out into the chest, and be pulled into the system. And then the piece of wood would be pulled away, and a piece of iron would be put in there. And the iron would be put in along with a piece of blank slate that we just made. But this blank slate light would still be on. So it would put the blank slate in here and immediately pull it back out. Because there was a race condition that the update of this uh, level emitter was happening after the pull from the import bus. So I added this toggle bus on here because that makes it so as soon as it sees an item enter here, it will cut all of these lines. And then when they restart again, it'll force it to double check and make sure it has the right item from this dropper. So we'll never have that race condition. Those are the things that were holding me back the longest while I was trying to design this because I kept on having these, these issues with inconsistency that seem to be completely fixed now that I put in these conditions. I hope this video helped. I hope those explanations made some sense. If you have any questions, please ask. If you want more videos like this, please let me know what kinds of things you'd like to see designs for. Thanks for watching.